the Daniel Cleland Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me today a good friend of mine, somewhat new friend, but good friend nonetheless, Mr. Logan Mater. Logan, uh, some of you may know Logan from his various different experiences over the years. He rose to fame uh, with his uh, participation in the group Machine Head and then Soulfly. And then he kind of left the music playing industry and got into the music recording industry. Uh, worked with a ton of bands that probably anybody who understands metal or or rock would recognize. Um, Logan's now playing with Once Human and doing a bunch of other stuff, which he's going to talk about, which includes coming down here to Costa Rica to produce our new Savage Existence record, which is me and Jesse from Soltara. And uh, hopefully uh, we got a singer uh, on the hook right now, as well as uh, some other musicians, uh, guitar and bass, who are going to need to join us, hopefully, when we go on tour. So, um, yeah, Logan, welcome to the show, my man. Hell yeah. It's good to be here, man. Uh, it's been a pretty epic 10 days. Has it been here 10 days? Yeah, I think flew something by, like that. Yeah, 10 days. It flew by quick. Um, I had a great time working with you guys. Um, um, good players, good music, good destination. Can't complain, you know? Um, so how's Costa Rica been? Costa Rica is fucking amazing. It's my first time here. Um, I love, you know, I love the work I do. I, I'm a freelance producer, mixer. And I get to do shit that I love with good people that I usually end up becoming like really good friends with when we do a project. It's like, you know, it's a special bond to make a record. It's people being creative. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, when it comes down to it, it's like creativity. That's the, that's the, it's the biggest strength of our human species, in my opinion. Absolutely. So, um, that's like us primal doing what we're meant to do. It feels right. It feels fucking good. You know, I enjoyed, you know, it was your first time like making a record. And yeah, I always enjoy seeing people do that for the first time because I've done it like a bunch of times, but I remember my first time and how like impactful it was for me. So that's always, uh, that's always a plus. And then, you know, like I came here, you were like an, a good acquaintance and now it's like bro for life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, I'm super blessed and lucky that I get to do what I do. Uh, I never, I never take it for granted. Well, I can, the passion shines through in your work, what you do, the professionalism, the just absolute mastery. I mean, I, I was honestly wowed, um, even from the first day, just, just seeing how you work knowing everything inside and out and it just seems like you have this commitment to quality perhaps even a tinge of perfectionism which is probably a good thing when you're dealing with uh making music but you know the the element of 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 friendship and and getting to know each other in in like a creative environment working on a project together i think that's really awesome and having spoken with you all week it sounds like you have relationships like that across the music industry. You've toured with guys, you've produced records, you've played shows, you work on side projects. What is it like? And, you know, how do you feel about having so many connections across this vast industry? Well, I mean, like I said about, well, just for the, just for clarity, I want to, I want to, stay for the record. So we came here to do the instrumental portion of your album because you have all these songs that you and Jesse wrote, but you don't have a singer yet. <laughs> it's kind right. of a big piece of the puzzle is not there yet. So we're going to get to that. I know I'm going to help you when, when you do get a singer and help you find a singer or whatever. I know you have some good leads, but yeah, so we're, we're, we're in progress still. In progress. Yeah. And so I'll, hopefully I'll get to come back to Costa Rica to do the, do the vocals too, you know? So looking forward to that. This place is awesome. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I've had this crazy life, 25 years in the music industry, travel around the world, play music, front on 
do what I love, be with great people. The bond you experience on tours is a unique thing too. It's kind of like when you make a record, you, you, get, you get like, again, you're in this special moment that you're all sharing together and you, you develop inside jokes. You just have this experience that's really connected and meaningful and fulfilling for everyone involved. And it's like, a, it kind of, it lasts, it, it creates like friends for life. And touring does that as well. Touring gets a little bit more on the crazy side, like, you know, <laughs> like the, you could imagine <laughs> uh, the adventures in touring can, you know, it's, it involves more of like the celebration side of it. Whereas being in the studio is like, I'm here to fucking work and make a record. I got a budget. I got a timeline. I got hours in the day, you know, on tour, you, you play for one or two hours a day on stage. You warm up for an hour, you play for an hour, and then you got 22 hours to party. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so, yeah, that's uh, well, that's a good life. So, has there been much of an evolution in the touring lifestyle, the music industry lifestyle between like when you got started 25 years ago and what it's like today? Yes, very much. <laughs> In what ways? Well, I mean, there's... Back in my day, <laughs> before the internet, you know, uh, when there was a lot more money flowing in the industry, things were different because of that. There was less competition from artist to artist. And, you know, so it was more decadent. And also there was no cameras everywhere documenting or busting people out to get counsel for just being, having fun or whatever. You know, I got away with, <laughs> we all got away with things that you might not get away with these days because of no iPhones. So I got to experience that, the, the end of the golden age of uh, heavy metal and touring lifestyle. It was awesome. And I'm lucky to be alive, to be honest, man. I fucking, you know, did some damage. But uh, I got to put some miles on my on my soul. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so nowadays, and, and you know, it's hard to say because if a, if you're a young band coming up and blowing up, you're gonna party like rock star too. You know, you just. Um, but I'm you know a little more mature now and more uh, reined in. I'm more more focused and more business minded, and I'm, you know, kind of been there, done that on a lot of things. So, and. I've been up here and I've been down here. So I have a great appreciation for like where I'm at now. I don't take it for granted. So it's a different perspective. I still love it, you know? And again, like uh, with my band Once Human, all my, my singer and all the guys in the band, they, they were touring for the first time. It was their first, they're young guys and, and she's young too, but they had never toured before. And I, I put that thing together, got it a record deal, got it on tour. And I was like the, I was like the leader, the camp counselor, or the yeah, babysitter, yeah. Or the fucking tour manager and everything. And I got to see them like just hit the stage for the first time and look over and just like, ah, oh, you know? Yeah. And watch them fucking kill it. Like I knew Lauren had it. I knew Lauren had star power and big potential, but she'd never done it before. Like who knows? Get up there and like, she could, she could just freeze up. Yeah. She just fucking came to life <clears throat> and crushed it. And she's evolved incredibly since then as a, She's a fucking beast as a front woman, uh, creator, songwriter, performer in, in the studio and on stage. And yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm proud of that to, to be the developer of that and watch it to get to this, this level now. It's like, uh, yeah, it feels good. So, um, so just, just to clarify, Lauren Hart, your... Wife, partner. What's well, a handshake deal? She's, it's a handshake deal. My, my word is good. She, <laughs> she's my woman. Yeah, she's my woman. Uh, she's a great woman. She's amazing. I love her. Um, she's very talented. And uh, yeah, she came to me as a production deal. I was just supposed to help her write some songs and produce some stuff. Referred by Monty Connor from... Um, well, he was at Roadrunner at the time. He used to be Roadrunner Records guy. Legendary A&R guy. Roadrunner and uh, Nuclear Blast. He referred her over to me. And she never sang before. She was a guitar player. I made her a singer. I said, you're going to sing. I think you can sing. I'm like, get in there and do it. I guess you can. I see that. And then eventually she sings like a motherfucker now. She's like all kinds of different characters and her growling is powerful and all her melodic voices and, you know. But, you know, um, 
Yeah, it's 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 interesting to have a, a working business relationship with you know with your woman. I say interesting. <laughs> Sometimes it's like really difficult, and sometimes it's awesome. Ultimately, it's more awesome than it's not awesome. So, we've been through. We've been seven years in it. So, um, yeah. yeah, I don't think anything can fuck us up at this point. We've been through some shit and back, and uh, in a good place. Nice. I think. I think probably a lot of people would agree that being in business with a romantic partner has its ups and downs. I've also done it and has a lot of ups, but sometimes the downs can catch up with you and some people make it and some people don't. So it's awesome that you guys are doing it. Yeah. I don't recommend doing it. If you have the opportunity to say no, (laughs) just just (laughs) not do the business part, just do the fun part. I would say go for the fun part, but I went there and it's worth it. I'm way beyond the point of no return. So it's like, and I embrace it for all of that it is. And it's amazing. So, uh, yeah. You also mentioned, uh, re- related to your kind of evolution as a, as a, an adult, let's say, um, touring and you used to, you know, you told me some stories, which I'm sure you probably don't want to go into here, but, um, you know, people can use their imaginations about what it's like to tour with a, a popular, uh, young band rising star in the heyday of heavy metal when no phones existed. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, and you made it, you made it through that and you made it this far. And now, you know, you've gone this whole week. You've, you, you don't drink alcohol, you don't take drugs, you, basically, like you said, you're business minded, you're responsible, you're focused. And, uh, some guys that you came up with in the, in the industry didn't make it or, or, um, didn't come out doing so well. But most of the guys that are still around making music who started back at the same time, they did, they did, uh, find a way to, get clean and get off the booze and get off the drugs and become business minded. Yeah. And just not dead. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's, you know, I got to tell you, man, that's like, this is a really personal, I guess, but I'm going to go there and just say like, that subject is like the boss fight of my life. And I realized this recently. So people that know me personally know that I like to party a little bit or all the time, a lot. (laughs) Um, but people that don't know me probably don't know that. Like they think health and fitness, he must be like strong, healthy. But I mean, my life has been a series of waves like sobriety, self-destruction, sobriety, self-destruction, destruction, destruction, sobriety, self-destruction, back and forth like that. And uh, what I've realized recently, and it's like, it's a pretty big, pretty big thing is that... Uh, I don't know how to moderate. I don't. My operating system, it doesn't do moderation. It's in my DNA. I don't have that, that code or that plugin. And I've seen people that can do it, like have a couple drinks or get high once a year. And like, I can't do that. A couple drinks for me is 17 drinks and an eight ball of cocaine and a handful of Molly. And what the fuck else you got? Because we're not going to stop until three days from now. And then I'm <laughs> like eating a handful of Xanax to come down and my heart's like... <clears throat> <laughs> I <should> be, oh. <laughs> like that I mean metal <laughs> also also me I like to metal. work out and be well it's self-destructive dude and I, I realized like when I say the boss fight in my life I feel like okay whatever reason I have karma like that I don't get to have moderation for whatever reason I don't know what it's from past lives or whatever but like karma comes into play you have to learn the lesson that it puts in front of you there's no free willing your way out of it Like uh, karma overrides free will. And so I realized that and I accepted it. I forgive myself. I'm like, okay, that means I have to win this boss fight in this life or else the next life, it's going to come back again and again and again. It's not going to get easier. It might get more difficult. It's like until I fucking kick kick its ass, then I, I can't like progress or level up. It's like life is like a video game, you know? Like an RPG game, you'd like 
you play it, you die, you pick up where you left off, you die again. Eventually you learn the level, you beat the boss and you level up. That's kind of a simple way that I look at life because of my belief system and, uh, you know, life, death and rebirth, the whole thing. So, so that's, uh, <laughs> so yeah. So it's been 90 minutes I've been sober. No, 90 days. <laughs> Actually, 90 days. Yesterday was my anniversary. You That's have a good. sticker on your car. It's like a registration or something. It says March 22. That was my first day of sobriety. Okay. And now June 22 was yesterday, 90 days later. So. Nice, man. Congrats. So this time it's different. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> really cliche thing to say. And like, really like, okay, dude. Because I've gone up and down like so many times. So... Um, but why is it different this time? It's different because of the realiza- realization that I made. Like I realized that this is like, it's like every Star Wars movie rolled up into one in my fucking head. And I have to, I have to fucking triumph over it. I have to do it or else, you know, because otherwise I'm, I'm going to be dead and then I'm going to have to do it all over again. So, so, so I, that's for me, it's a big thing, but I also, I can still, I like, I'm okay with people that party and I love people. Like, I don't judge. I'm not one of those that's like, oh, I can't be around it or whatever. Like, I'm in the music business. I have to be around it. Every day is a fucking open bar, big party all night and I can hang. I, I know I can. It's going to be, I mean, there's temptations that's going to come. It's going to come for me over and over again. So I have to, uh, I got to stand my ground, uh, stand my ground and follow through with this. So like the fact that I'm saying it right here public is really unlike me, so... It's a loaded statement. It's a fucking time bomb. Because if I fuck up, I mean, I don't know how many people see this podcast, but it's going to live on the internet forever. So it's there. It's in stone. Uh, I'm saying it. So that says a lot, I think. Uh, It puts the pressure on too. (laughs) I can always remember that. Oh, don't fuck up. Because the last time I, I, I did four years sobriety and then one day I was like, I can do moderation. So someone's like, hey, you want a glass of wine? And if I could in, I was like, okay, fast forward 30 days later, I'm a fucking wreck. Like just <laughs> out of my fucking head on like all the drugs and whatever. And it's like, you know, <clears throat> I should have realized then I don't know how to moderate. I do. I did know in the back of my mind, but it kind of really just set in and uh, had these realizations recently that that's it. It's done. I got I to gotta do this now. So um, it feels good. Have you been working with any like organizations like, you know, like I know Ivan Moody's public about his involvement with AA. I'm not sure what, you know, Randy did, but nope. You just No, I don't bat I don't I no. The one thing that turns me off about AA and the NA is like there's just some fundamentals I don't agree with. And I think it's great as a tool for people that use it and it works. I'm not dissing it like for people, but for me. It's like the thing they say that uh, I am powerless over my disease. Mm-hmm. I'm not powerless. Yeah. I'm powerful. And that's why I can make the choice not to put drugs on my body. So that's something I don't agree with. And I don't want to repeat those words. I am powerless because I am powerful. I'm not yeah. powerless. Um, another thing that. is like, hi, I'm Logan. I'm an addict. And it's like, if you're not using... Why are you an addict? Yeah. I, hi, I'm Logan. I have self-destructive tendencies written into my DNA. That's accurate. I could say that. I'm okay with that. But if I'm, uh, if I'm sober and if I can be in a room where there's alcohol or drugs and not do it, then I'm not an addict. I'm not a practicing addict. I'm a, I'm a sober. I'm a sober dude. Yeah. yeah. Right, right on. But nothing against those programs. I know people, it helps a lot of people and I think that's great. But um, um, it's just not for me. I had to do it. Do it on my own. So that's more the that's more the experiential kind of lifestyle elements of music and producing music, playing music, going on tour, and being a musician. Um, we've also discussed that the and you had just mentioned that the 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 economic or or business aspect of the musician lifestyle has also changed in the last couple of decades. Um, you know, I I've spoken in depth with you. I've I've spoken with other musicians who and it, you just see it like on the internet. A lot of guys are doing kind of side deals and starting other offshoot businesses and stuff like that. So 
Um, what is the economic reality these days for most of the bands in in the scene? Well, it's uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough it's a tough racket to to be successful financially in music, but it can be done. Um, but yeah, you're right. A lot of people are. But just backing up one, can I back up? Sure, one yeah, second? of course, yeah. It, it just to kind of t- tie it in. It's like you know, it's the what got me into like is get, wanting to get high a lot in the first place is is music in a way because you get up on stage, you're playing in front of 130,000 people, for example. It's the biggest high you could ever imagine, or 10,000 people, or 4,000, or 400 people. If the energy's good, it's fucking high. It gets you high. It's that show cane, and then like like all highs, it comes down after, and that's where my, myself and a lot of people, I think, in that position feel like, uh, when you're coming down, you want to, you want to, you don't want to come down. I don't want anything to end, you know? So you try to sustain the high feeling with synthetic means of getting high and showcane turns into cocaine. <laughs> so, <laughs> but showcane is still awesome. I, I'm okay. With, I'm okay with that. By the way, I do, I, I do a lot of caffeine. I, t- I quit nicotine. I quit everything. I'm 100% sober except for caffeine, which is a drug. So um, 99% sober. I'm not going to quit caffeine. Maybe, maybe I will. I don't know. I don't feel it. Like well, even I, the, a, even the AA guys still. Chain do. smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee all day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. But I mean, yeah. So nicotine, I, I don't think it's a bad, bad. I was chewing the gum and so I wasn't smoking. And so I wasn't killing myself from nicot from smoking. And the nicotine itself, I don't, my doctor told me it's not going to give you cancer. It's not that bad. It's not bad. It's like, and I was like, okay. Um, but I quit it just to, to fucking, to, for the challenge, just to, you know, to take control of my, my uh, responses and my actions. And so I did quit it. And um, yeah, that wasn't, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. But yeah, I did that one too. So. It is one of those addictions though, where like you're doing it every like dude and i yeah i was vaping uh nicotine vaping i quit that in april 2020 but i was vaping more than i was breathing (laughs) i was like i couldn't (laughs) put it down i had that thing in my hand 24 7 and that was starting to hurt my lungs a bit and i was developing like a chronic cough so i'm like okay that's not healthy i quit that and then um but i still chewed the nicotine gum but that after so many years of chewing nicotine gum it doesn't even, you don't even feel anything. You just yeah. have to have it. You feel if you don't have it, you have to have it. And then you're okay because yeah. you have it, but it doesn't change it. I don't feel high from it or like any little lift or whatever from it. But yeah, that's done now too. So, you know, you were talking about the the high of the show and and all that probably doesn't help when like, people show up to the show and they're there for one night. So they want to go balls to the wall, right? They want to come backstage and go balls to the wall, yeah. but you're doing that like every, every day. Right? <laughs> yeah. We have an obligation to all of those people in every town. <laughs> so yeah, you know, there's a way to pace yourself. Like when I was doing chores with, chores with, Mach- with Machine Head last year and in 2019, I was drinking and we were having a great time, but we would do it on, not on school nights. And that tour would be like two days on, one off three days on one off or one on one off. And we'd have a lot of days off where you could that night you could let loose and just sleep all day. If you want the next day in a hotel or so there's ways to function and, and do it right. But if you, if you, yeah, if you let yourself get sucked into it every night, then you're going to be feeling like shit, you know, the next day and maybe not perform as well. Or having to take drugs the next day to get back on point for the show. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Well, man, fortunately you made it through that. Yeah. And that's, that's, I should have been awesome dead so many example. times, man. I'm like, I, I should have, you know, I'm lucky to be alive and I'm really grateful that I'm still alive and I uh, respect it and appreciate it. So this time it's different. <laughs> it is, this time it's different. Whew, here we go. <laughs> okay. So we discussed, um, we discussed some of the more experiential aspects of, the music industry of being a musician, your history, going on tour, et cetera. Um, But there, uh, as we've discussed earlier, there have been some other changes to the music industry um, from the days past 
couple decades ago related to like actually how hard it is to make it as a band. And, um, and I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. best. Yeah. Yeah. So the traje- trajectory of, you know, revenues in the music industry has, has gone like, at least with album sales has gone straight fucking down almost to zero. And over the last 15 to 20 years, so that's a noticeable thing you can't deny. And then the other ways to make up for it and streaming revenues, it's like, it's, it's difficult. You, you know, when you get a fraction of a fraction of a penny for a spin and, you know, and people consume music for free because it's free, <laughs> you know, they used to have to buy music if they wanted to hear music. And now, you know, it's not like that so much, you know, people buy CDs at your shows when they, because they want you to sign it. You know, more than mm-hmm. anything. And I don't, I don't know anyone who has a CD player, you know, but people buy on, on iTunes, I guess, too. So, but it's tough and uh, we have to adapt, you know, um, in every way you can adapt and overcome, you know. So for me, like, it really hit me in 2020 when house arrest happened and everyone's, the end of the world is happening. So I'll, I had like Europe, UK, Russia, Australia with Machine Head booked. And I was, that would have kept me busy and pretty good, you know? And once Humans album would have came out in 2020, that would have kept us busy as well. And all that shit got canceled. So there I was. Like basically the whole music industry just lost their primary source of revenue. Absolutely. Gone. Like it suffered, you know, it suffered badly. About as bad as one business, a lot of businesses suffered, but, you know, yeah, we got way fun <laughs> in a business. When you're in the business of filling up a room <laughs> in a yeah. time when, yeah. you know, people aren't allowed to be near each other, you know, it's just done. <clears throat> but it's good to, good to know that I'm optimistic and we're getting back on our feet. We got tours yeah. starting to happen again and that's great. People are going to really appreciate it. I can, oh, it's yeah. going to feel good. That's first wave of getting out there. It's going to be awesome, you know. So, but for me, I'm like, well, when am I going to sit here and cry? So I'm losing revenues. Also, I'm a freelance producer and mixer. I rely on getting, getting work and and a lot of it dipped in that, in that time. So instead of (laughs) crying about it, I I started two new businesses in 2020. So one of them was, is a cannabis business. And, uh, I had a side hustle prior to this. That's, um, credit card payment processing for cannabis dispensaries, licensed cannabis industry dispensaries and CBD merchants and like vape industry um, accounts. So this is like a independent contractor, agent, freelance agent type of work where I work as much as I want. It's, you know, very little I do, but it's, it creates a little bit of passive income, but it really created some good relationships. And I got to go around all around the States doing like uh, trade shows and building relationships and meeting a lot of good people in cannabis industry and, and in, in CBD. And so um, from that, I parlayed into um, an opportunity, invested a small investment into a cannabis vertical in, uh, in California called Cali Care, Care Group. Cali Care Group. It's owned uh, by my friend Joe Reed and he's a great guy. He's a metalhead and fucking really cool guy. Uh, a good mentor great entrepreneur. His, his company is worth 13 million. He built it himself. He, despite what all his peers were doing, like taking big investor raise, capital raises, uh, you know, like way more than they could chew kind of fucking things. He did it himself with very little investment, outside investment. And, and in, in doing that, he maintained control of the shape of the company and the way that, it, that it's marketed and, you know, the, That's the, the best path way to go. that it's on. And he's proud of that. And he should be because it's something to be proud of. So... Um, <clears throat> all along the way, people were doubting him and maybe like, you know, people buying Lambos off investor money and like not return, not showing returns and stuff. And he's just like, in the rock, like pot star lifestyle. He didn't want to do the, you know, sure. flashy pot star lifestyle. He's just like kind of low key dude, legit dude. Um, so yeah, I like the way he, he does business and I like him as a person. He sponsored me. He has a CBD company as well called Royal Dignity Care CBD, which is really great CBD products. And he sponsored me on that. Um, so two things came with a Joe, actually. So the cannabis thing I got in after All In. I'll talk about All In in a second. But um, So I have a home delivery route in Palm Springs, Palm Desert with the one driver. It's a small, but it's profitable and it's growing. So 
I did that. And then um, opening a second route in San Jacinto, California, which is an inland empire. Both They're both like Southern California. Um, and uh, Closer to Vegas? Well, not close to Vegas. Like no? LA. Well, Palm Desert's like two hours inland from LA. It's in Palm Springs, Palm Desert. And then San Jacinto is like an hour from LA, hour and a little bit inland mm-hmm. empire. 909. Um, it's a small town, San Jacinto, but there's no other licensed cannabis home delivery uh, licenses r- operating there right now. So we got that going for us. And uh, I have a collaborator on that one. The, the Palm Desert one's my own. And so, yeah, I got into, got some skin in the game in the weed biz, licensed only, no black market. Um, there's a lot of black market cannabis <laughs> in the world. Everyone knows, but you know, I'm not into taking risks. And so I just do it, like do it on the, do it like, you know, above, above board. Well, fuck man. The reason Jesse can't tour is because of a dumb thing he did in the past that got him a record, right? He can't so, tour? Well, he's, he's getting a, he's getting a pardon. That's what I just asked okay. him about. <laughs> like he's already, he had the pardon in process, but then COVID hit. So he, ah. the office closed, but right, right, right. he's just got to get back on it. Cool, so cool. yeah, he, you know, but, Love but yeah. So yeah. what I'm saying is you don't want a, you don't yeah. want some kind of a, a stain on your record if Not, you're traveling yeah. the world touring. Well, for that reason, also just, you know, in general, I don't want that, you know, I got, I got a family, I got kids and responsibilities and life to do. So I don't want to take risks like that. I, I take risks like, you know, on things like opportunities and stuff, but not when it, it's, uh, you know, putting my freedom at stake. So sure. Um, yeah. So that is fun stuff. Um, I see myself expanding more into cannabis industry stuff. I have a lot of good relationships with, with some really talented and cool people. You know, it's a big corporate industry now, but there's a lot of like alternative type people in it because it's weed business, you know? So, yeah. And even doing the credit card processing thing that I do, like that's a corporate fucking financial institution job. That's not me at all. And I was like really hesitant to do it when the guy, uh, my friend Eli told me, you probably be good at this. You should do this because he has a huge company that he's like, empire he's like <laughs> killing it like you know and uh you know i didn't even know anything about that he's a music industry relationship of mine but he has this huge company and he got brought me in and um yeah so it's a corporate space but really it's re- in reality it's kind of alternative because it's weed people you know like more creative side like more alternative counterculture like Weed people, weed dealers turned entrepreneur, you know? So, yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like, it's cool. I fit in okay in that for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to like straight up mainstream banking or some shit. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a banker. <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> um, yeah, fuck that. Um, and then the other thing, so Joe Reed, the Cali Care Group, weed, my weed partner guy, he owns the CBD company and he sponsors me for CBD. And, he told me one day, Logan, I want to make a, C- a signature line of CBD for you, like the Logan Mater CBD. And I was like, wow, thanks. That's awesome. And I was flattered. And I was like, cool. Then in my head, immediately, I'm like, no one's going to fucking buy that. Like, why is someone... The CBD industry is very saturated with a lot of good brands, a lot of shitty brands, and a lot of it. And like big marketing machines behind it. It's like... To think that just a CBD that says Logan Mater on it is going to make people buy it. Maybe a handful, maybe a few, but like, I was like, how is that going to compete? How is that going to stand out in this huge industry that's really competitive? And so I, I just sort of tabled it kind of in my head for a minute. And then I thought, well, I got to make something that speaks to my character, to my personality, something that's personal to me. Like, so I thought, well, what would that be? And I thought health and fitness, like working out. And I thought, wait a minute. What if we combine a stimulant, like a pre-workout type stimulant with the CBD? He had a holistic blend that's uh, broad spectrum CBD, turmeric, black cumin seed, MCT oil from uh, organic coconut milk powder, and then black pepper, which is like a amplifier that increases bioavailability of all the ingredients. And I thought, well, let's combine that holistic CBD with this stimulant that I love that, uh, that I ended up getting... Uh, you know, the ability to use. And uh, I was like, that's awesome. That's like, it's like a pre-workout and a recovery all in one. And I'm like, it's called all in. That's it. It's all in, all in one. So that came 
to me and I felt excited about it. I got like goosebumps from it when I when I thought about it. I was like, this is that's awesome. This is gonna work. I'm 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 gonna run with this. And so Joe loved the idea. Um and then so the reason like C B D in and, and turmeric are natural anti-inflammatory. So that helps joint mobility and recovery in, in your in your in your mobility and flexibility and pain management. Um so to take that with the the stimulant at the same time, I think it's pretty effective, and uh, I love it. And so I so I went to my friend Jason Pendergeist, who owns the company Motivate, which is a very successful uh, a fitness supplement company, like big, with twenty million, twenty two. I don't know, it's like a big big company. He he built it up. He he kills it, and uh, they have a lot of great products. And it's another industry hard to hard to get big in. Right? Yeah, There's a lot of competition. In that, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he bought. Yeah, I think he bought the company when it was uh, distressed, and he built it up like ten x really fast. Hmm. So he knows what he's doing, and he's like, killing it. So, and he's a nice guy, and he sponsored me for Motivate. He has a, one of the things they have is called Motivate, and it's like a fat burner slash pre workout. It's just uh, it's a it's a stimulant. It's not like a typical pre workout that has all this crazy stuff in there that gets you like fucking methed out and cracked out, and like you know you like don't know what to do, but you got to do something kind of vibe. I hate those kind of pre-workouts. There's like, I just, I don't like them. Uh, and there's a really small market for people that really like those. They're pretty hardcore. Like a lot of the pre-workouts, they make you like, oh, you know, yeah. especially in the U.S. There's a bunch of like weird formulations yeah. in the U.S. that are not legal in other countries. Yeah. Th- yeah. There's always a new ingredient that's not yet regulated. Yeah. And it's like, fuck it. <laughs> this shit. And then <laughs> FDA comes along. No, that's killing people or that's fucking people up. They take it out and then they take it out. So it's like, it's not that. It's, it's caffeine. It's three. It's a lot of caffeine. Three hundred milligrams from you know four different sources: anhydrous, uh, green tea leaf, yerba mate, and uh, green coffee bean. And then like yohimbi, a little bit of, and then some CLA for, and then raspberry ketones, and as a diuretic. So it's it's like a fat burner energizer. But it's no jitters, no crash, no fucking tweak. It's basically. It's more than coffee, less than cocaine. <laughs> it's like, and I love it. I've been using it for years as a consumer. And then I got sponsored by them because they're like, oh, I, I hit them up and uh, they're, they're ambassador program people. And they were like, yeah, we don't normally sponsor people that are not like fitness people, but you're, this is cool music. You're, you look, this looks cool. Like we're going we're gonna to do it. So they, they started, um, you know, just giving me product and gave me a promo code and, you know, whatever, a profit, profit share and stuff. And, I invited them to the to a show in the last show I played actually Anaheim House of Blues Machine Head in uh, February twenty second, right after the show. February twenty second, twenty twenty two, right after I met you, like yeah. a week a week later. And the, and Jason came out to the show. He brought his wife and his team, and they had a great time when we met face to face and vibed, and that was it. So then it was six months later, four or six months later, that I brought him the idea of all in. And he was like, that's amazing. It's like, no one, he, he researched it. He's like, no one's doing this right now. It's a revolutionary idea. <clears throat> I'm totally in. He gave me the right, you know, the rights to use the burn matrix, just the stimulant blend. It's uh, not the flavors or the sweeteners or the colors that comes in the, the, the motivate burn, but just the, the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> bought a couple kilos of it. So white powder. like. But no, so I did the formulation really quickly after two, two tries. I got the formula right. And I, I just, me and Joe, Joe, I gave it to Joe, gave it to me. And like, um, I already knew it was, it was good. But like the blend with the CBD and it's zero THC, broad spectrum CBD. So it's, uh, um, and then the turmeric, it like somehow it, it's, it's got a euphoria. A, a, and I've heard this from other test subjects. It's got a little, a really nice, clean, energized uh, feeling effect of, that you really feel. And uh, um, a little bit euphoric, you know? So, and then a lot of people, have, I tried to um, test it on, on like 100 people, you know, legit extreme sports guys, like, um, and... Uh, Normal active lifestyle people, mostly active lifestyle. Some weightlifters, powerlifters, trainers. Hundred percent positive feedback. Everyone loves it. They back it. They want to use it. They will buy it. You know. So. So you're at the stage right now. You're. Are you like marketing this right now? You you're you're hunting. Uh, I'm 
planning to go to market full on very soon. I'm just, I put a, a team, a core team together on my end to complete my deck and got this whole plan together to roll it out and what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. Um, a small amount of investor capital is going to be needed to get to start it up. And then um, it's off to the races. So, you know, the plan involves some, all the kind of marketing that you would think of doing these days with social, with ambassadors, with the commercials that play on social media and then um, ads on social media. And uh, the influencers is going to be important to the name, big name, you know, medium name to big name influencers that really like it. I only want to get influencers that really like it and really yeah. use it because it's real, and, you know, but that shouldn't be hard because everyone so far has liked it. Um, and then trade shows. There's a bunch of trade uh, relevant trade shows I want to hit up end of this year. Then all next through next year. Um, there's also a drink. We're gonna do a two a two ounce shot energy shot of all in with three different flavors. We're working on the formulation for that. And uh, yeah, so what, what's that gonna do with your time in the music industry? Well, it's fine. I, I can make it all work. You know. Yeah. yeah, I can do this from anywhere. If I have a laptop, I have a phone. I, I can do any any of this stuff. Like. Um, but I put a good pla- I got put good moving parts in place yeah. that can be full time on it, you know. So I got this guy Rob, a friend of mine, and Alexis that he brought in, and they're they're great. Like they they know this industry, they're hardworking, they're down, they're really into it, and um, yeah. So yeah, cool man. Well, that's uh, that's exciting. I'm happy for you. Um, I'd, I'll always uh, be behind you. I've been I've been taking all in for the last few days since he got well since he got here uh it's, it's had some uh some powerful powerful effects uh but i like it yeah it's all good um it's all good and uh i would like to keep taking it so i'll keep uh i'll keep buying it keep supporting it i got you covered <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can i send that to costa rica they're gonna block it. oh then there's no way no they're really it, tight about that stuff. It, there, it huh? doesn't matter if it's vitamin D, if it's any if it, food supp- or supplement. I have to go to a doctor to get a prescription for it and then get it approved at the health ministry. Wow. It's like, dude, honestly, it's just easier for me to fly up to the States and grab oh, some. Yeah. 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 But uh, anyways, what's... Uh, so just kind of in closing, what uh, what are your next five moves? What do you got in the go? Like, like besides getting your supplements, what are you doing with music now? I know you got some stuff coming up. Yeah. Uh, well, once human has well, so if this is if, it, if we're in the future right now, if after July second we have a a big single drop with once human, and it's a it's a really cool song called Deadlock, featuring with a guest vocal feature by Rob Flynn from Machine Head, and so yeah, uh, it's the song turned out amazing. Really stoked about the collaboration with Rob. It's not something that he does very often, and uh, yeah, I love the song. I love the week he's in the video. We did the video; it came out great. Which I saw and it's super cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah, so that's next. And then we have a full, we have a whole schedule of rolling out the Once Human album. And it's, it's a long rollout this time. They, my label wanted us to put the record out not until next year. And I was like, <sighs> we've been waiting. It's been forever. What, because people, because well, they- Because of not cope. being sure if things are going to be open. Yeah, Once Human yeah. is a band that really needs to be on tour we need to know that we're going to be on tour during the release week yeah. and and beyond. And they were uncertain about whether it's going to be okay to tour or not like this year. And obviously we'll probably will tour this year. So, but I told them like, we got to put songs out. We got to put content. I don't care if it's a, if it's a seven month rollout to from first single drop till the album release. I don't care. I want, we got to make some noise. We got to do this. So they, they got behind me. And they said, okay. And uh, I'm grateful for that. I got a great team. I got Des Fafara from Devil Driver. He's a manager for Once Human and he's killing it. He got, he got us great booking agents, both America and international. He's great in um, making things happen, getting things done with our label. And we got a really great uh, product manager at our label, Air Music in, in Germany. He used to be at uh, nu- Nuclear Blast, I think. Or no, he used to be at Roadrunner. Yeah. But he's a metal guy. He's like a legit metal guy and he knows what he's doing and he's great. Really on, to- uh, really on top of shit. So we have 
five music videos in the can right now for the new album. Once well, half the record is I've done. I've seen, I think, what, two or th- one or two or three of them. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I think, yeah. I think, well, you've been sober the last week. I most definitely have not been. <laughs> <laughs> so my I'll live vicariously a through you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're a fucking the first trooper. Thing, the first thing Logan says when we get out of the car here, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally sober, but, you know, I'm not one of those guys who, like, says you can't drink around me or whatever. I'm like... Well, that's kind of necessary <laughs> because yeah. uh, we're uh, yeah we're gonna be making music. Uh, that's kind of how we roll, but <laughs> for be- now, making anyways. beautiful music. Yeah, yeah, dude, you live in the dream, you know. In the uh, I back it. Right on. Well, um, for the record, this man's a legend to work with, and uh, it's been a hell of a pleasure. So you too, man. Yeah, man. Thank you for everything and thanks for joining us today on Business Life and Ayahuasca with Daniel. We didn't talk about psychedelics. Psychedelics? I want to talk about psychedelics. Do we have time? Yeah. Well, uh, 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 my buddy said uh, he can can push back till later this week. So, Oh, you're meeting? Yeah. Am I Ubering to the airport? He wants an hour, so yeah, I can't. Shit. So yeah, go. Yeah, it's all good. But 25 minutes we got. Well, that's enough. So... Yeah, so, the, so the, I met you because, and I never look at my general messages rarely on Instagram. Only if I follow someone, they're going to message me. But you sent me a message in, I think, in November 2019. I was on tour in Europe on Instagram. And I was like, well, okay, I just woke up. I went in the venue and I was taking a dump and I'm like scrolling. And <laughs> I'm like looking all of... Uh, I never look at those messages and I looked at it. I was like bored and I looked at that and I saw this one. It wasn't just a, someone liked your thing. Someone reacted. It was like a message. I'm like, okay, what's that? And it was a whole thing. I was like, huh. And the first thing you're talking about is I own an ayahuasca healing center in Costa Rica. And I was like, oh, tell me more. Because at that point, <clears throat> I had been interested in, in, interested in, in psychedelic medicines. And uh, I have a history with psychedelics as a as a, in a recreational point, you know, uh, point of view. (laughs) Like I started taking LSD and and mushrooms when I was 13. And I, all those trips were like fun and games. It was never like a deep uh, learning experiences. It was never psychologically advancing. Like I, I was just like, whoa, trippy and fucked up and laughing and like, Everything's melting. Fuck like yeah. Like most high school <laughs> like, kids are. Yeah. But then uh, then I would have bad trips sometimes and bad trips with the fucking end of the world. It was the worst thing ever. And I never knew how to get out of it, but I learned something recently. I know it's, it's really interesting. I think it's my, my theory about bad trips, which is really good to know. But um, so yeah, I would have these bad trips. It was the end of the world, knotted up in your fucking thing, like, like for four hours, just <laughs> looping in some insane, irrational, fucking super anxiety end of the world scenario for hours and it sucked. And then it finally you go away, you go to sleep. But <clears throat> one thing, and I, then I stopped. I went the last time I took mushrooms with, with Phil and someone and Des Fafara at Red Rocks when a machine hit was on tour with Pantera and, uh, and Cold Chamber, 1997, 96. And Phil's like, I got a big bag of mushrooms, man. I was like, fuck yeah, we got a day off tomorrow. He's like, yeah. And Des went and so I was like, oh man, my bus calls at 2 a.m. I don't know if I can hang with the mushroom tri- trip tonight. He's like, fuck it, go on my bus, man. My bus leaves when I tell him to leave. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> fuck yeah. So I did, a, did the day off with, with, a, with Phil and <laughs> we went hiking around the mountains. It was awesome. But it was fun and games, mushrooms too. But that was like... <clears throat> 20, 96. I don't know the math. Like that was a long time 25 ago. 25 years ago. Yeah. Pretty much. So and I didn't do any psychedelics since then. Until <laughs> in 2019, I decided I'm going to do DMT for the first time. For some reason, I started like researching it. It, it was calling me and I was found myself and it was showing up on my feed and like I was researching and I was interested and I'm like, I want to know what this shit's like. So I got some DMT from this dude, Jim Shroom, gave me a, sent me a vape, a DMT vape. And it was fucking legit. It was like 200 bucks for the vape. And it was like legit. <clears throat> um, and I did that shit and fucking blasted off for my first time. And it was like, okay, now I get it. And so it's next level. Like, <sighs> 
and you know, you, you've done DMT, right? Have you yeah. Done? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of so times. So super like out of body, super sacred geometry in motion, like things that are seeming to be impossible shapes and motions and movements, but totally somehow makes perfect sense and like colors that don't exist in our spectrum, but they're right there in front of you. And uh, faces like that feel like they're looking at you and they're, maybe they're actually a, an entity or a real being somewhere. I don't know, saying hi, <clears throat> but heavy, heavy shit. But then it's over in like 10 minutes. You're back to normal and like go back to work. And so I did that and I didn't get any like... I didn't get any like download information or some guidance or anything like, but it was just like kind of, uh, I kind of felt the connection like, uh, actually, so I did come out of it with like a deeper connection to the earth, the mother earth. And I felt like the earth, I was connecting to the earth and that, that the earth is alive. It's a being and conscious and it's an ancient being and it's very evolved and very wise and ancient and like, very extremely giving. It's the mother. It's the mother earth. It's the mother earth, motherfucker. It's the mother of everything that we have here. Everything, like all of every molecule, it comes from earth. So she gives us life, you know? <clears throat> so I felt that. I felt that connection. And, uh, but so then I did mushrooms like a few months later for the first time since that 1996. And I did like three grams of mushrooms. And my mushroom trip was like, different than any of my childhood mushroom trips. It was like a DMT. Visually, I would close my eyes and I could see a whole movie of <clears throat> the geometry and the faces and the, the motion and the whole like fucking full-blown hallucination, whatever the fuck I was tapped into some portal or whatever, if it was, I don't know. But it was like way different than my previous mushroom trippy whoa bro kind of fun and games mushroom trip. And so I was like, I, I, in that moment, I'm like, I wonder why, how is this, how is this happening? And I was like, I know why I came to a, <laughs> a theory in that moment of highness. Um, that, that fact that I did DMT, it like fucking jumpstarted my pineal gland mm. and like activated my pituitary or, and or pineal gland. And like, cause that's, there's DMT crystals in there in your brain anyway. So it did that. And so now the mushrooms, which is almost the same thing as DMT are allowed, they were allowed to have that more like a DMT effect. Mm. I don't know. That's a theory. I believe it. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a scientist. So I don't know. But <laughs> that's what my intuition told me. That's what I've, I, I came to the conclusion that it was. So <clears throat> that happened. And then also I got into a bad trip moment on this mushroom trip. And it was like, whoa, that, you know, the bad trip. You know the bad trip. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah. It's end of the world. <laughs> Nothing, no big deal. But like tighten up super ultra anxiety, tense, tension, like. <gasps> Were you around people? I was, with, I was with Lauren, but then I, but this is what I did. I asked myself in that moment, what is the root of that bad feeling I'm having right now? I asked myself in my head, I'm like, why, what's the source? What is this? Why am I feeling it? And immediately a fucking face popped into my head, one of my kids, and I knew why that popped into my head. And that's like, Immediately, the bad trip went away and I realized there was something on the fringe of my brain from recent months that I needed to talk to one of my kids about. Just like a talk I needed to have with him. I needed to express some things to him regarding like the divorce and this one child in particular, he took it a bit harder than the others and I knew that. And I didn't act on it. I knew I needed to talk to him about this and connect and <clears throat> um, I hadn't done it. And his face popped in and I knew that's yeah, I need to go talk to him. So I knew that the mushrooms told me, like <laughs> they told me. Gave you homework. They gave me homework. They yeah. gave me an assignment. Like I and, I, and immediately, so I took away, I took away that <clears throat> and the bad trip went away. The good trip came back on and I was like, <laughs> back to normal. <laughs> and uh, I went and had that conversation with my son and um, it was, well, it was awesome. It went really well. It was effective. It was important. And I did it. Did you tell so, him it came from a mushroom ceremony? No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> but isn't that cool? Doesn't yeah. that, that's a, I mean, dude, this is like kind of the, the, same, the same methodology that ayahuasca uses, right? Like you go into the ceremony, it, it, can, be, it can be super hard. It can feel like a bad trip. But the idea is that you're 
like I bring a journal in with me for every ceremony and I can't see what I'm writing because it's dark and you're not allowed to have light. So I'm just like writing like in the dark. I'm writing big and, you know, so I know that it's going to be legible the next day. But yeah, man, like ayahuasca gives you homework. It's what it does. It gives you homework. You, you get you, you get shown things that you should be doing. You get shown things that you shouldn't be doing. You get shown people that you need to reach out to. You get shown people that you need to get the fuck away from, you know, stuff like that. And so you get homework and then the whole process of integration is going and applying those that homework in real life and, and completing those assignments in real life, which you did by going yeah. to talk to your son and improving the vibe in your family, improving yeah. your relationship with your son. It's amazing, man. Like, so I think that's like, it's a great medicine. And it's like, you know, I feel like it's, you could get like 20 years worth of fucking psychology or psychiatry work done in that one moment in that one ceremony like because how do you fix something if you don't know what it is what's wrong yeah. and like yeah. ayahuasca or mushrooms or psychedelics it's like open up the hood and look in the <laughs> yeah. subconscious it's like you're you're exposing yeah and you're getting directly to the root of the problem and that like that's amazing so i back ayahuasca i back psychedelic medicines for this purpose and um you know i'm kind of conflicted i want to go to saltara and i, I really want to do that um, but I don't want to, I'm on a, cause of my sobriety thing. It's like, mm. I don't want to, I don't want to cross the line and, um, a double standard, anything. It's like, if it's a medicine, it's like, oh, you, <laughs> is it really? But I mean, no, I mean, I, it is, but I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm going to go, maybe it might be a year. It might be a few years. It might be, I might never do it. I might not need to like, in my meditation, I also started practicing meditation during house arrest uh, a lot. Meditate hard and do breath work, intermittent hypoxy through some of breath work techniques and also Wim Hof techniques and a little bit of the cold water stuff. And that is good for, that's free healthcare. That's also self-healing for your healthcare, for your brain and your consciousness and for your body. So <clears throat> I'm doing that stuff is pure and doesn't involve any substances, you know, it's just breath. It's just like pure breath and consciousness and intention. So I get a lot of good, uh, I get a lot of good out of the meditation that I do. I get answers if I have questions, but also it's just like good, oh good. it's free healthcare. It's the real fucking free healthcare. You can heal your body. You can heal your brain with your intention. It's the, it's the science of consciousness. I believe it's real and uh, like some kind of quantum shit. I don't know how to explain it, it's like, it's weird science, but it's fucking real science because I do it and it works. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right on. Well, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, when you do decide to, uh, to uh, go down that road, you're able to come to Sultara. Um, you know, there, we, 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 we have a number of people who come through, like guys who have been sober for like eight years or 25 years or I'm well, may, I, maybe not 20. I mean, since 25 and you guys like 47, so 20 plus years. And they kind of felt conflicted about, um, about, and, and they, they felt like people would judge them and they felt like their, their AA communities would judge them or like they would be breaking the rules by coming to work with ayahuasca because it's not, classified by that community as anything that's beneficial it's still considered a, a, like a drug but um both these guys who i'm thinking of they came and did it and they ended up doing more psychedelics because they had such a life-changing experience with ayahuasca but they didn't go back to booze and they didn't go back to drugs and they didn't go back to the same patterns that that got them down down the the you know the the pit of despair kind of thing and led to their near self destruction. Um, so you know uh, I can I'm yeah. put you in touch or something. Well, I'm you know I appreciate that story. I think that's great. Um, I have also heard about people who were sober and then they went and did ayahuasca and it triggered them back into relapse. So really, I yeah. guess that could happen. You know, because it's 
I don't know. Maybe it could. Anyway, I'm in a great place, like, and content and, like, clear on my path. And, like, I don't think I, I'm not looking for, I don't think I need it right now. You know, I'm, I'm doing, doing good. I don't think, uh, I do, I do think like ayahuasca is like a conduit to fucking mother earth. And like, you, you can talk to the consciousness of earth through it, which I would love to do, <laughs> you know, just like yeah. give her a hug <laughs> or say, what's up, you know, say, thanks. I would love to do that. But like, you know, whatever else I could learn from it could be great. As an answer. Well, meditating on a mountaintop can also. Yeah. You know. I know I can do that in meditation. Fuck. So hell yeah, bro. All right. Well, thanks again. Hell yeah. Thank you. The Daniel Cleland Podcast. Thank you so much, my friends, for checking out the Daniel Cleland Podcast. We love you and appreciate you. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, share it up with your friends and loved ones who might benefit from these episodes. And if you'd like to check out more episodes, we've got some links conveniently placed over there so check it out share it up and until next time be well much love to you thank you so much